In this video, we're going to cover the basics of the eMonitor user interface. eMonitor is actually comprised of the main eMonitor application and a variety of utilities. Let's take a look. Under Start All Programs, find the Rockwell Software folder, and under that, the eMonitor folder. Under this folder, we find the main eMonitor application, some help files, and under the online folder, we'll notice that we have a variety of things. The eMonitor EEM utility, or Extraction Manager, allows us to manage, schedule, and map data from the 1444 hardware into the eMonitor. The RTA, or Real-Time Analyzer, both of which these utilities are available in 4.0 and greater. And then the Online Data Management Console, which enables us to manage from a central point all of our external data uh, connections such as NWatch, XM, OPC client and server, and Logix online data, for example. Let's take a look at the utilities. Under utilities, we have a variety of things. We won't get into any great detail in a discussion on this particular video. Scheduler is an important one as it enables us to schedule a variety of functions to happen on a particular time schedule, including importing data from our online systems executing the severity updater, for example, which updates our alarms, or the storage limit updater, which enforces our database storage limits to prevent our database from growing too large. We also have some other things, like the calculated points updater, the data mover utility, calculated points obviously updates our calculated points externally, and then the import-export utility, which can be helpful for sharing data with tech support, for example or other eMonitor installations. Let's go ahead and launch eMonitor and take a look inside. When eMonitor starts up, you're presented by default with the data history view. And now the data history view is comprised of a hierarchy pane on the upper left hand side. On the top right we have the location pane and beneath that we have the measurement pane followed by, at the bottom, the archive data pane. eMonitor provides a variety of different data views depending on your needs. We can look at the full list here. You can create new views and customize the existing views to a very large degree to suit individual needs. Let's take a look at the alarm panel view, for example. This is where we can take a look at what the current alarm states are of our existing data. You'll see we have highlighted bands and we also have severity indicator dots. Now the color of the highlighted band represents the highest severity of all items that are currently existing in alarm states beneath that particular hierarchy item. So in this case, red is our highest levels of severity, even though we also have a yellow alarm under there. Now the highlighted band enables us to show other users whether the alarm is being acknowledged or not, which is helpful to know, since other users can then infer that they don't need to necessarily spend time investigating that alarm if somebody's already looking at it. So we can acknowledge that alarm by right-clicking on it at the measurement location or hierarchy level and saying acknowledge alarm status. You can see that makes the alarm highlighted band go away. However, the severity indicator dot remains displaying the current severity status. To look at how the alarms are actually defined, an eMonitor is one of the most extensive alarming capabilities of any condition monitoring software in the business. We go to the view alarms option. And you can see it looks very much like data history, except that the archive pane at the bottom has been replaced with the alarm configuration pane. And you can see as we click on different measurement types, we have one or more alarms, or even zero alarms defined, depending on whether we're applying them or not. But we'll get different alarm options depending on which data type we have actively cursored. To edit a particular alarm, we simply double click under the alarm definition that particular alarm cell and that gives us a dialog box that allows us to modify that alarm. We won't go into any detail here. We'll cover that in a subsequent video. Let's take a look at the frequency setup view. 
Frequency setup is where we can define the machine characteristics starting with a speed reference to enable eMonitor to track based on an input speed what our fault frequencies are. Again, we'll cover this in a later video. Going back to the data history view, let's take a look in a little more detail. We have three levels of hierarchy, starting with the plant level, the train level, and the machine level. We can put locations and measurements at any of the th levels, and those three levels are expandable up to six. Typically, location measurements are created at the machine level, but that's not a requirement. The location represents a physical location on a machine where we are taking data, which might be a accelerometer attached to a mag base with a data collector, a handheld data collector, or it may represent a channel on one of our online hardware devices. So under each location, we have one or more measurements defined. So let's talk about data types. In this view, you can see we have magnitude spectrum, numeric and image, but we have a variety of other data types to choose from as well as time waveform. The image data type allows us to simply link to image files. Numeric is any process parameter that we like. ActiveX allows us to link to specific file types and associate those files with the host applications that created them. So we can double click, for example, on an entry for an Excel spreadsheet, it will launch Excel and load that file. It might also be an infrared document, uh, infrared graphic file that loads the infrared application. The calculated measurement is a very powerful tool. It launches a calculated wizard, which allows us to take existing data in the database and perform calculations on it to derive calculated measurements that we can also trend an alarm on. Enumerated simply gives us the ability to let eMonitor know a particular machine state. Is it on or is it off? Is it running a particular process? Let's talk about another feature that's very useful called creating lists or tagging lists. By tagging an item at any level in the hierarchy, either with the toolbar or at the location and measurement by clicking in a particular cell and double clicking that empty box to the left, we are creating what eMonitor calls as a current list. This current list can be used for data collection or reporting. Now, in cases where we want to use a particular list on a regular basis, and we don't want to have to manually retag those items each time we run a particular report, for example, we can save those lists and reuse them later without having to retag those items. To do that, we simply tag the items of interest. Then we go to the list menu. And under list menu, we simply select Save. Then we give it a highly creative name like, I don't know, how about Demo List? And click OK. We can also schedule these lists for route collections and assign them to particular users. But for the purposes of reports, when I open the Report dialog box, it defaults to Current List, which will print or include in that report anything that's currently tagged. But I can select the Save List that I just created and now, whether those items are tagged or not, it will include just those items in the report that I select. Let's take a quick look at plot views. Under the plot icon on the toolbar, when we click that, we're presented with a variety of plot views. eMonitor provides quite a few. The auto view, just as a quick example, gives us one plot pane for each measurement defined under the location that we have been currently cursor on. Thanks for joining us for the basics of the eMonitor user interface.